Hello darlings, welcome to Naughty to Nice and we are so zany tonight, it is stupid. Alright. Oh my gosh, what is up? Teresa Purcell from Arizona. Do you miss us? I know, I know, Suave said I never told you that. You did. Laia, Laia, pants on Chinese fire. Okay. Well, you tuned in on just the right night because it is getting insane in here. And you know what? You're actually going to regret moving to Arizona. And you know why? I'm going to show you why. Look what was brought to me today. These absolutely gorgeous blueberries. Oh, sweet tea is in the house. What's up, sweet tea? Got your blueberry. Oh my gosh, look at these big boys. Mm. And you know what? I don't know if you know this or not, but blueberries are on the keto diet. You can eat berries. Not a lot. Oh, I'll <laughs> get you some. So I've got blueberries. Now, should I make something naughty or nice with them? I agree. <laughs> naughty. <laughs> okay. So because this is something special, we're going to... No, is that Mr. Worley? What is up, Mr. Worley? We are so missing you. All right. So this is my very famous recipe for blueberry pie. Number one, stop eating them. Or you're not gonna make them to the pie. Okay, number two. Huge Worley. Huge whirly. Uh-oh, did you put on some weight? You need to go on a keto diet. Stop eating all that bread. Mm, yes. <laughs> Uh-oh, I got to put this on. Hang on, give me a second. I'm going to do this just for the pie dough, okay, y'all? Just for the pie dough. Okay guys, so I'm gonna teach y'all how to make a lattice. And I know that in all of your life, you've always wanted to know how to make lattice. And it's super exciting, and it's super fun, and it will make you happy. Well, I don't know if it'll make you happy, but it'll be awfully pretty. All right, this is my homemade dough. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I had this leftover from something, so I sometimes make my own dough, you guys. It depends. The focus of the show is not the dough today, okay? Because this is naughty all together. It's naughty, 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 naughty. So, we're focusing on the look today. The look and the amazing taste. So, I've got a little bit of bench flour, okay? Bench, please. Give me your flour. <laughs> oh, you know what else I need? So this um, episode tonight is actually very serious. I mean, we're doing something fun, you know, and getting this fun out of the way, but this is actually a very serious episode, okay? We're doing serious stuff today. <laughs> All right, by the way, these are rutabagas. Mom, cook a little bit longer. Come, they get them? All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just roll it just a little bit to get my lattice shape. And, and remember one of the rules is you have to move it, move it, okay? Now I'm going to take this lovely, by the way, so an amazing new friend in the audience tonight, and he brought me these blueberries in exchange for bone broth. So, he is going to work on his gut. He had the guts to try it. And now, his gut will be repaired. 
and he will be able to do great things with his gut. He'll have extra guts to do gut stuff. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm being goofy. Ah! You know, they actually make a cutter that you go like this and it like cuts everything evenly. <laughs> As you can see, I don't have one of those tonight. <laughs> Aren't you guys interested to do this? All right, now what I do, what I usually teach my students is I put a little bit of flour, you know, just like you were doing chicken feed. Okay, now I start by doing lattice all the way over like this. So that's going to be my Audi. Now I'm going to do my Innie. <laughs> All right. Got a little bit of water. And I'm going to use my good old fashioned brush. Okay. Now I'm going to start by every other one, I'm gonna take it down like this. Every other one's gonna take it down, take it down. And then I'm going to take, ah, I'm not gonna drop it, and put it like this. But first, I'm gonna just put a little bit of water, a little bit of water, a little bit of water, that way it gets stuck to it. All right, now, put those guys back in place, okay? them too. Okay, now, next one. What am I doing? Now, I gotta go under. So now I go up. One, two, every other one. And then I have another little guy. And put those guys back in place. Mmm, you're looking good. Looking super sexy. Going to be a sexy pie. Well, I'm going to start an OnlyFan pie page. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, you guys? Paulette is loving the bottoms. Oh, you're so sweet. Yes, I am. Oh, my gosh, they are so crazy good. Okay, now. Once again, I have to do this again. So now I pull this guy up, that guy up, and that guy up. Now, be patient, my pastry friends, because the pie is going to be so delicious, you're going to cry. you to look like you're crying. Okay, once again, we go up, we go up, we go up. Shakata, shakata, shakata. This really seems like a tedious process, doesn't it? It's really not, it's really not. So, oops, and up, and up, and once again, shaka, 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 shaka. We're definitely getting to the end, y'all. Okie dokie. Okay, come here. All right. Psh, psh. I never have patience. Maybe that's why I didn't really like doing this. No, you loved it. Don't lie. You loved it. You absolutely loved it. I have patience for more pastry than I do people. Okay, we are really getting to the last one. Okay, and now I think I've got just enough room to do this last little one. It's just gonna be two. Push, push, push. Okay, 
Now I'm going to go off the excess. Okay. This could be a chicken pot pie too, couldn't it, y'all? Yum. A bit naughty. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna throw this in the freezer for just a moment. Oh! Yo, Chef Mama, good to see you. Did you see these beautiful blueberries? Look at those, aren't they gorgeous? A friend of mine brought these to me. And, incidentally, we're also going to be talking about, we're doing an interview with Meatloaf gonna be fun okay so let me go ahead and grab the rest of this dough really quickly to finish this guy off super easy Need to stab this thing. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen blueberries that big in a while. Sometimes, even if they're that big, they may not be sweet, but these are sweet and big. They're big boys. They're big boys. Okay. All right. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yes, she says yes, and you didn't have to pick them. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, I think we're kind of getting to that point in society almost where we're not going to buy our food anymore. You're either going to have to grow it or do something to earn it. <laughs> we're going back to those days, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Good old-fashioned days. Remember the good old-fashioned days? I don't remember them. <laughs> I never had them. <laughs> My good old-fashioned days were jumping off the couch in our... <laughs> at our house in Houston. <laughs> okay, so number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and six. There we go. And very lightly. And the cool thing is, the pie dough can be re-rolled. So, I'll save this stuff for later, alligators. And now all I'm gonna do is simply, so I've got the, does anybody like it? Do I need to like, see what's going on here? Nope, nope, okay. So, I'm going to take, I've got some cold butter. And all I'm gonna do is just add a little sugar. You don't need a whole heck of a lot of sugar. Might have like a little half a cup, maybe. Now, I could put fake sugar. Well, not fake sugar, but non-sugar sugar, but the pie crust is already naughty, so might as well just go with it. Now, if I would've planned this episode a little better, I would've made it not naughty. I would've made it nice, okay. So I'm just gonna throw some sticks of butter, like a half a stick of butter, and a little flour, and cinnamon or not cinnamon? What do you guys think? No, yes? What do you say, Nick? <laughs> okay, how about just like, like the way you barely notice it? It'd be negligible. Actually, I can't do it because I don't know where the cinnamon is, so I'm not gonna. It's cinnamon in any? I mean, I do like cinnamon and I would put it in there, but the only thing is it just dawned on me. I think it's outside and I don't, I don't want it in there bad enough to go out there. I mean, I pretty much like cinnamon and everything, so. All right, so let's throw this blueberries into the pie. Kind of spread that butter out a little bit. Buddha. Yum. The audience says yes to the cinnamon. I think you should listen. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Why don't we put cinnamon in the ice cream? No. Maybe a splash. Ooh, it looks so good. All right, let me see if I see it. If it's where it's supposed to be, then I might do it. If not, you're gonna be SOL. All Simply out of luck. Ish. Barely. That's barely. It's just enough to notice that it happened. Okay? Now, I haven't had this very long, but I have a feeling I can still do it. So, take a little bit of water. You can use water. You can use milk. Whatever suits your fancy. All right. Now, I'm just going to take this guy off. I'm going to hope it comes off. Come on, boy. Yeah, just flip it. Baby, you can flip it, take the turn, do it right, you can do it, baby. There we go. What do you guys think? You like it? Ooh, it's gonna be good pie, yeah. Yeah, Malou. You gonna let, well, that's how she talks. <laughs> she said, yeah. You know how Malou talks. By the way, Randy is here too. Got a fraction of the old game. Yay! Randy's on here tonight? What is up, Randy? Come say hi. Or can he figure it out? Randy's probably like, I can't figure out the time. I can't figure out the time to see with us. Just kidding. I'm messing with you, Randy. Messing with you. All right. What do you guys think? Look amazing? Now, I'll tell you, there's one other last little thing you can do. You can take milk. You can take egg wash. I'm just going to take a little water and I'm just going to lightly do on top. What do you call this? Not do on top. What do you just pastry brush this on top? Pastry brush on top. Can't wait, you guys, to talk to you about this meatloaf, to have an interview with the meatloaf. Y'all are going to just love it. It's, it's going to make you cry in a good way. Okay. Just a little bit of sugar on top. Hey, if, if Randy's in town, I'll have to bring Randy a piece. He'll have to come by and get a piece for his fam. Is Whirly in town? Whirly's not in town, I don't think. That's who said it. Yeah, I know. No, but he was talking about our friend Randy. Who he? I think he's saying he's, his friend Randy's watching. Oh, I think he's here. But I. House. Well, I don't know. I have no idea what he means. Until he says what he means, we don't know what you mean. Okay, guys, I am going to take exactly a sixty-second. Um, BRB, just so I can clean up the station so we can move on to everything else, okay?
right, darlings, I'm back. Time to make the meatloafs. We're making individual meatloafs. So I've got grass-fed beef, which, by the way, once again, we need to thank Rusty Grimes for providing us with the delicious grass-fed beef. I don't know if you can call him out on there. But anyway, so we are going to... And we're going to talk a little bit about what the difference between the grass fed is and the non grass fed when we do an interview with the meatloaf. <laughs> I can get this stuff in the package. Have you ever noticed how some people, it's like everything is challenging, including just taking something out of a stupid package <laughs> or a box? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'll do like this unpacking. I guess I should unpack stuff. Get out of here, dude. Alright. So here's what we're going to do with the meatloaf. to add a little garam masala because you know I like garam masala. No. No, I know it's so hard to believe. And just a wee bit of salt. Well, hello Walter and Judy. I'm glad you guys stopped by. I am so enjoying your uh, RV ventures now. Very exciting. I'm excited for you guys. This is a delicious, also a yard egg. You may ask yourself, why are yard eggs better than the eggs that you buy usually in the grocery store? And why do they not look anything like the ones that you find in the grocery store? You certainly don't get blue eggs in the grocery store. By the way, that's garlic powder, a little Cajun, but not much. Just enough to say I put it in there. And I am going to put a little Italian, even though this is kind of like going to be like an Italian Latino meatloaf. I know, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But I really don't care. It's going to be amazing. Going to add um, a little almond flour because, you know, I don't use flour unless I'm making a naughty pie. <laughs> Only naughty pies get the flour. <laughs> so I'm going to use a little of that and just a wee bit of Parmesan cheese. Where did I put my Parmesan cheese? Oh, I know where the Parmesan is. Okay, I see it, I see it. Oh, and you know what? Remember, I told you guys I like to use these nutritional use flakes flakes too because they may have a really yummy flavor and and then I'm going to use a wee bit of parmesan but not much just a little bit because there's certain people in this house that are like <gasps> okay now I'm going to use my hands which are the best for so I don't know if you know this or not but, yes, so, food has a life and a spirit, and it remembers the hand that touched it. And that's why your grandmother's meatloaf is so wonderful. She puts her spirit into it. It's also why my hands were anointed to do this good work. Okay, so... We are going to make individual ones today, and since this is one pound, I'm going to make four ounce meatloafs. So, I'm going to cut them in half, and then cut each half in half, okay? Looks almost even. All right, they look like big fat meatballs, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to kind of do them. You know, you could put these into cupcake holders, but what I'm going to do is kind of make them like big fat eggs, okay? By the way, you can move me over here. Yes, you can. <laughs> Love the hat. Thank you, darling. Can you see where my dog tried to eat it? Now, 
Next time you and Judy are in town, y'all should come over for dinner on Tuesday nights. If y'all are here on a Tuesday night, we'd love that. We would love it. And there's my last egg boy. Now, now I know you guys are laughing if you've been watching me the last few weeks, but you know I have that salsa magica, which I love so much, which has the cacao and the macadamia nuts. Well, I just can't help but use it, the last of it. And Malou's also hot salsa I've got right here because I like a little tomato something something on there So that's gonna be kind of the tops for these meatloaves. Oh Sandy's paying attention to means the dog loves the hat, too <laughs> Yeah, he loves to eat it <laughs> Hey Sandy Hope you're having fun in Arizona. I guess I'm gonna have to make a trip out there and see you guys. So what I'm going to do, y'all, is take the little salsa and just kind of sprinkle it across, or well, kind of rub it across the top of each one of these. Hat alert. Hat alert. Oh, sorry. You're supposed to put that noise. You're supposed to do that. Do -do -do -do. Not in the mood. Not in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of these are just some caramelized onions y'all just gonna kind of stack those on top okay Now, I'm going to finish these off with bacon. Okay. So. See, I don't even know what I'm doing, y'all, so I'm just going to wing it here. Oh, looks like we'll have to have more than one piece on these meatloaves. Now, y'all may be thinking these look naughty, but they're not. They're nice. They're going to taste naughty. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Check these meatloafs out. Woof. need some music I have a, another friend that's a fellow twitcher I I was watching his stream last week and like he had music on it was so loud I could hardly hear what he was saying I was like turn your music down and he wasn't paying attention to his stream I was like I said turn it down it's driving me crazy he still wasn't paying attention finally paid attention I was like I'm getting ready to get off the stream oh <gasps> mother liquor Y'all think I should like make one little piece of bacon for the, the puppy dog on the side? Last one. I may have to open it. One last one. What are y'all talking about? Bacon! This is the bacon song.
Now I think I'm gonna add just a wee bit more of this, but not much, just enough to keep it on. Okay, lastly, I didn't know for sure if I was gonna do this or not. I kept changing my mind. Definitely gonna do it. Just thinking a little bit of these tomatoes. Maybe put like two on each one. Like this. Hot. Sorry, I know I'm hot. Interesting. Speaking of hot, I heard an interesting discussion. I think you guys might be interested in the discussion. When describing a woman, what is the difference between hot and beautiful? Okay, just think about that for a second. Don't get too hard for it, but just something interesting to think about. All right, now you know what. I may need one last thing too to keep it glued, because, but because I have a, uh, I've got a piece of uh, rosemary that needs to hang out there. I guess I could have put a little olive oil, but so because I want this rosemary to stay on there. See, isn't that pretty? If you don't think that's pretty, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Voila! Time to go in the oven. Oh, well, hello, little blueberry pie. You sure have caught my ha, ha, little blueberry pie. Ooh, that blueberry pie's gonna be so good, y'all. All right, time to put these guys in the oven. Oh my gosh, mamma mia. All right. I'm actually going to put the timer on so I don't forget about it. Okay. I've only got two things more to make before I do my interview. Oh. What is it? All bacon all the time. Wee bit. <laughs> Must be Irish. Sex appeal. Well, I think, yes, I think that's true. <laughs> But what the question is, uh, the question is more, uh, um, actually, I'm not exactly sure what the question is. Just forget it. <laughs> just forget it. I'm zoning. All right. But I am going to turn on this guy. Sorry, guys, I got hot on the mine. <laughs> All right, so start. There we go. All right, now. I've got, this is what I'm going to do here with these green beans, right? You ready? Put a little olive oil on them. A little salt. A little bit of sriracha. I'm not going to go cray cray. Don't, don't get all excited. Just a little and just a wee bit of ginger. Mmm. That would be even more hot. And then a wee bit of uh, the yeast flakes because I know those are so yummy. And put the parmesan. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Don't get excited. You're stuck. Uh oh. Do I have any garlic in there too? I got some roasted garlic. You like the way I think? It's really roasted. Mmm. Like it's like smushed. Oh, some of it's dried. Some of it's good. Some of it's some of it's dried. All right. I'm gonna pick the one that's not dried. Just because it's been um, the lid got knocked up. Knocked up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all, you kill me. I kill me. All right, let's see if we can get all this stuff all over this stuff. Yum. 
This look good. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? What do y'all think here? Yummy, yummy, yummy. It's looking good, isn't it? I don't think I've had green beans in the air fryer. Ooh. Wait, are you supposed to pause it before you open it? Yeah, I think so. Oops. Hopefully I don't burn down the house or anything. Ow! It's hot. <laughs> what? Oh, spray? What's got olive oil on it anyway? Oh. I'm hoping I can get half and half. Is that too many? And you're supposed I think you're supposed to like I don't know. Just halfway through give it a good shake. Okay. Alright. All right. <sighs> Slightly oil them so they blister. No poop, moop. Um <laughs> I did put olive oil. That was the first thing I put. Did you guys not see me put olive oil on it? It was like the very first thing I did, y'all. The first thing I did because I'm trying to get them to blister. All right, so. All right, now I need a separate timer unless somebody give me a four minute timer. At four minutes, I'll shake them. All right, so we'll do them in two batches. Meanwhile, all right, so I've got some rutabagas, rutabagas. And as you guys know, rutabagas are, have a much higher nutrient dense card than potatoes, and they don't have the added carbohydrate sugar to your system, and they are lower in carbs. So I'm going to make those. But I have to find this. So, let me see that. going to do is just take a little bit of the salted butter and throw it in the pan. Uncle Stan. It would be really weird. I think it would be too much of this, but it would be kind of cool. Is to put spinach dip in there. Like spinach dip in the Vegas, but I'm not doing that tonight because we already have too many other weird things going on. So, so. Okay. Okay. Ah! so I'm just gonna use a wee bit of whipping cream. talk to you guys um, when I get to that point about why I use whipping cream instead of low-fat milk, why I use real butter instead of margarine, um, when we get to talking about things that are nutrient dense. Masala. You know, I don't know if you guys know, but I guess, I don't know if it was 2020, I don't remember when it was, but somebody was telling me we were going to have a shortage on garam masala. It was like, I'll take garam masala over gas.
actually have like just a slight flavor of um, season. I just froze, had to go out and come back. Gotcha, well I'm glad you're back. That's because you're living like way out in the middle of nowhere. As if Milton were not bad enough. Take a look. Ooh, they are blistering and they're looking good. Yummy, yummy. Ooh, these really look good, y'all. This is like, I think, the way to make green beans now. All right, so in this air fryer, I am going to put them for, what do you think, three more minutes? Okay, let's do it. Three more minutes. One, two, three. Go. just to see how it is traffic jam either sheep or cows oh my god that's hilarious <laughs> huh mm, that is so good mm. oh y'all that is so good i'm gonna have to take them off the um feet though Is W beaming right back? Wildebeest. Wildebeest. <laughs> Beauty is based on aesthetics and elegance. Doesn't need to involve sex appeal. Oh, okay. So can you be both? Society tends to tell us hot's the better thing, but then then they punish you for the hot and then tell you to be beautiful instead. But then people don't know what beautiful is and anyway. These are my rutabaga. These are my rutabaga bagas. <laughs> bagas schmegas. You'd be proud. My sourdough in Japan was like better than the bakers. And wow. I'm not surprised. It can be both, if necessary, <laughs> necessary, if needed for the moment. Until I've got old people in the house. <laughs> Don't feel bad on this, I'm old people too. <laughs> close am I on that second three minute timer? Uh, Less than one minute, I'm sure. Just about 10 seconds. Okay. These are going to be chunky, mashed. Done. Okay. okay. And we can finally hear again. Oh. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Uh, now what am I gonna put them in? Mm. Hmm. Hang on. Do you, do you have that purple, you know, thing that's about like long? You know what I'm talking about? Hmm. I'm not exactly sure it is. Hang on. Will you? All right, that's okay. Uh oh, my 
in trouble? Uh-uh. Oh, he's commenting? Read it aloud? Uh-oh, I'm scared. It's okay. Don't be scared. I have no idea who or where this is, but I love this. Oh. The only one that can wear that hat is obviously awesome. Aw, that's, that's sweet. That's my friend Kelly. Aw, that is so sweet. It's on the Facebook post where I take pictures. That's awesome. That's too sweet. All right, you guys, so I have one last little batch of this, and then we will begin the interview. I'm going to check on the pie and everything. Then we will begin the interview. It won't take long because this job needs to be filled right away. Get it? <laughs> You're definitely not going to be the next person on the premise. <laughs> okay. So, look, you can check it out. Before... Before and after. Call me Polly Alpha. All right, four minutes. And we turn it around in three minutes, and that's it. Yes, absolutely. In the microwave. What's in the microwave? Oh, put this in the microwave? Nah. All right, let's check everything out. Oof. Looking good, looking good. Y'all wanna see the pie? Thank you, yes. Looking good. Mmm, totally looking good. Need to go a little longer. These guys, I think I need to turn them up, but I'm gonna wait until I take the other guy out. I'm going to get, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. All right, when the timer rings, I'm probably going to take the pie out and then I'm going to jack up the meatloaf so that bacon can get really brown. The beans, oh. Oh, oh I see, just, to, oh, to stay warm? Oh, I'm probably just going to put it by the, uh, yes, it is. Walt, where are you guys right now? What part of the earth? No, I'm going to try not to eat all these. Somebody's got my four minute timer. Okay. So while we're waiting. You know, it'd be better for me to just take this thing and move it to somewhere and let it like, or just watch it like itself. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's pause it. Can you just like uh -huh. leave, leave the thing on it and just move it over there? It's just, nah, just going to plug it in. Like you don't even plug, oh, you're going to plug it in over there? Yeah. Okay. And plug it in accident. An accident? Yeah. Is it an accident waiting to happen? Is it hot? Hang on. Relax. Hang on. No, I already did it. All right. It's strong like boy. Put it in this big boy. Okay, so I am going to move my chart closer so we can. So we can talk. Are you all ready? Are you ready to talk? Let's talk. Okay. <laughs> like a little thing or should I use my
But what we're talking about tonight is nutrient density, okay? So what I mean is when you're eating your food, are you getting the proper nutrients that you need out of your food, okay? That's supposed to be the purpose of eating food, to nourish your body, not take nutrients away from your body, even though some Franken food actually takes it away. Eastgate is a part of, oh, you're home in Eastgate? Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, you guys should have come tonight. Y'all could have gotten blueberry pie. And I'm still waiting for my invitation to go to that restaurant y'all go to all the time. All right, so there are two different kinds of nutrients in your food. There are macro and there are micro nutrients, right? Most people who are trying to lose weight or they're going to the gym, they're concerned about the macros, right? So you hear like, you know, what are the macros? I wanna know what the fat, the carbs, the protein are. That's what everybody wants to know, right? If you're on a ketogenic diet, your fat content's usually 70% of your calories, okay? If you are on a, um, just a typical standard trying to gain a lot of muscle and you go to the gym, you're higher in protein and you've got about 40, 50% carbs and you're way low fat, okay? That's what people usually trying to build muscle mass. However, you can build muscle and lose a lot of weight, I think a lot quicker, if you stick to a ketogenic diet. Of course, ketogenic diet doesn't really have anything to do at the moment with what I'm talking about with nutrients, okay? But macro diets, um, protein cannot be manufactured by the body, but actually carbs and fat can be partially synthesized by the body for a limited time, okay? So for instance, especially fat, okay? Some people can live off their fat for quite a while, okay? Because you store fat, okay? You also store carbs, but for a much more limited time. Okay, so if you are going to these two for your energy, then this one's probably gonna last a lot longer unless you're some skinny person or some major athlete, right? And so people trying to lose weight, if they go without food for a little while, if they fast, they can live off of their fat for a while. Trust me, I've done it. I've done it for 10 days. And I had so much energy, it wasn't even funny. All right, but let's talk about micro uh, nutrients because those are very important as well. Now these are, new, these are vitamins, minerals, and other components. We need more than just protein, carbs, and fat to run our body. I don't know if you know that or not, right? And just to give you an example of some of the most important ones that we need, vitamin D. And if you have a deficiency in vitamin D, hey, guess what recent virus is killing people as a result of not having a low vitamin D? Oh, Darkness. Begins with a C. All right. Wow. But I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get flagged. Uh, but by the way, Oh, that's so, so, oh, now I, now I see what you read in there. <laughs> yes, I'm not even paying attention. I'm so just ding dong. But anyway, so immune dysfunction is one of the uh, results of having a vitamin D deficiency. There's a lot of people that are deficient in vitamin D, and we're going to talk, talk about that a little bit and why. Vitamin C, chronic diseases, um, blood pressure, etc., cetera, is a result of not having vitamin C. Magnesium, depression is one of the results of not having enough magnesium. Take a nice Epsom salt bath, <laughs> okay? Brain, um, and then colon. Do you know where colon comes from? Where a really good form of colon is? Eggs, eggs, eggs have excellent colon in it. Um, DNA damage, brain development, and liver function. So if you're a booze bag, you should probably eat more eggs. All right, B, B, <laughs> vitamin B12. Cognitive dysfunction, reversible tremors, and Parkinson's disease is also a result of having a deficiency of vitamin B12. The last vitamin D deficiency that's very common is um, folate, which uh, can cause uh, um, birth defects. That's why um, the prenatal tabs are loaded in fo fo folate. Folate. Macros, macro, pass the hot dogs. Oh, come on now. Yeah, that's great to say until you're dying. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so next thing I want to talk to you guys about. So how do you come up with, can you see this? Let me see. So what is a, a scorecard? In other words, like if we're going to eat some food and we're going to do an interview of that food, like what are we looking for if we want to have some very nutrient-dense food, right? Well, if you go to myplate.org, which is the government's version of what a nutrient-dense food is, they will tell you that foods that are high in nutrients but low in calories like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, unsalted nuts, and seeds, lean meats and poultry, and fat-free or low-fat dairy, okay? But they exclude all foods that are high in saturated fat or animal fat. That's the problem with the myplate.com. But in the uh, primal health community, okay, there's more and more research that's being done showing um, that foods that are high in calories and saturated fat that are also nutrient dense um, are some of the best foods that you can eat, okay? Um, and the absolute best, most nutrient dense food is organ meats like cow tongue and liver. <laughs> and you know, everything I wanted to put in the episode when I first started and people were mortified. And yet, it's probably one of the most nutrient-dense things that you have. Is there such a thing as having too many vitamins and minerals as a daily intake? Well, if you eat too much food, then yeah, you'll get too fat. <laughs> All right, so one thing that you need to consider, and this is very important, and this is why I, like, I was going to talk to you guys about vegetarianism and why a lot of veg vegetarians have a problem with their nutrient density, okay? So there are three things that you need to factor in when it comes to bioavailability. And I don't know if you guys know what bioavailability is, but basically the nutrients that are available to your body when you eat them, okay? Because sometimes, to give you for instance, some foods, all the nutrients aren't available even though that food may have that nutrient, okay? So let me talk, talk to you about what I was saying. Vitamin A can be toxic. Yeah, of course. A lot of things can be toxic. All right, so three things to factor in with bioavailability is number one, the form of the nutrients. Number two, the presence of other nutrients that boost bioavailability, synergy in other words, and presence of nutrient inhibitors. Now, I wanna talk about that for a second because this is, number three is the one that affects a lot of people that have autoimmune issues, like me, which is something that happened about 10 years ago. So. So let me talk about the first one. So the form of the nutrient. So for instance, um, and I may be mispronouncing this, so forgive me if I mispronounce this, but um, heme iron is only found in animal products, okay? And it's basically found in meat and poultry, right? Well, 15 to 35% of that iron is available and absorbed in the body, right? But there's a different type of iron Okay. Hey, no, you're not too late for class. You're here. I'm, <laughs> we're totally like playing around here. So non-heme, which is like comes from plant foods, all right, your iron that comes from plant foods, which is the non-heme iron, you only get 2 to 20%, okay, 2 to 20%. So you only absorb when you have those iron foods that are high in <laughs> iron that are vegetables that come from a plant source, you don't absorb as much of that iron as if you got it from a meat source, an animal source, all right? The second thing is presence of other nutrients that boost bioavailability, in other words, synergy, all right? So some nutrients actually help other nutrients or actually need other nutrients um, in order to be absorbed. So for instance, Vitamin C, okay, which actually is primary, it comes from plants. Okay, so vitamin C is a very important nutrient and it absorbs the iron and fat and increases solubility of the fat. So, and also I think you've probably heard too that you need vitamin K to absorb some of your vitamin D. So there's like, 
there's different types of vitamins that actually help the other vitamins be absorbed. Like if you don't have one vitamin, you may not absorb it. And with that being said, and considering the bioavailability of the vitamins, the last thing is the presence of nutrients that inhibit or are anti-nutrients. And of course, you know, one of my things I always think of is lectin. Okay, so people always say beans are so good for you, but they're actually poisonous. And to some people, um, lectins actually cause a great deal of problems with their gut. And as a result of them, they aren't able to absorb some of their nutrients as a result of those particular ones. There's also, hang on, phylate. Oh yeah, the phylate, which is um, in grains and legumes. And the phylate actually um, absorbs calcium. So it takes away the calcium. So to be very careful when you're we're doing that. How do you feel about turmeric with the pepper supplement? Yum. I love turmeric so much. Turmeric's super good for you. All right, so let's get to it. So a nutrient-dense diet. There was actually a mallet study which studied seven food groups, 25 subgroups, characterizing the nutrient density of the presence of 23 qualifying nutrients. And guess what? Number one was organ meats. Fatty fish like salmon, tuna, lean fish, you can see the different in the scorecard. But vegetables, you see they, there are almost triple fruits. So vegetables, like regular vegetables, my only thing with this is that I'd like to see the scorecard of like each vegetable. But anyways, eggs are pretty high, lean meats, fruits you can see are lower, even milk, legumes, they're almost, I didn't even put those scorecards, but they were less than 100. So anyways, the good things that you can get from animal fo foods that you cannot get from vegetables are B12, the heme iron, the zinc, vitamin A, um, creatine, taurine, selenium, K2, vitamin D, DHA, EPA, and CLA. What you can get from plant foods, vitamin C, carotenoid, polyphenols. Flavonoids, you see all this stuff. I don't, even, I don't even have to read it to you because you can just laugh at my pronunciation. So, so let's take into consideration some of the things that we talked about and let's have a little interview with our meatloaf. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way and check on the pie. It's not as fun when I'm all serious, right? Cabbage and carrots, yes, absolutely. Cabbage is excellent for you. Sauerkraut, oof, all right. I think our pie is ready. I'm gonna take our pie out. Woo! Oh my gosh. So Mr. Athletic, this right here is why you probably miss being down here. Although I have to say those little bitty tiny blueberries up there in, um, Bo in Boston are really good. But boy, these blueberries here in Milton, whoo, you miss it. You're missing it. All right, I'm gonna check on these uh, meatloaves. They're looking amazing. Just need to be cooked a little longer. So I'm gonna jack up the heat just a little bit. Because I have a feeling these are going to be amazing. All right. Check on that. The jogging in those shoes. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So, time to interview the meatloaf. You know, you can do meatloaf. You can do schmeatloaf, right? We're going to do an interview with the meatloaf, right? So, let me get my board. So every day when you go to eat your food, you need to do an interview with your food, y'all. <laughs> so let's say there were two ways that you could make a meatloaf. One would be grass-fed beef. So we're gonna take our little cow and pretend like he is our grass-fed beef. And I guess I should get a little piece of grass for him, but 
I don't have it right here. So I'm going to ask him uh, certain questions, certain questions that you need to ask before you eat your food. Okay? So I need a chair as if I were in the other side of my interview. So let me go get a chair. Give me a 30 second BRB and I'm going to grab a chair. is up my friend miss stewart you are awesome and thank you so much for the 1000 shaka connies you are so awesome thank you for joining us I have to save you a little piece of this blueberry pie by the way we those jalapenos that you gave me the other night um my friend malu and i literally ate about half of them just raw well, okay, like if Malou's watching that, she's gonna say I didn't really. Malou ate half of them raw. I ate some, just whatever, but. Um, okay, so you were wondering if this pie is keto? No, it's not, it's just naughty. It could have been keto, but it's not. <laughs> it's definitely a bit naughty, because we're gonna eat all this other stuff that's good, but we're gonna be naughty on the pie. So, good morning, uh, Mr. Cow, and you've been eating grass-fed, so you're grass-fed. It was nice to see you today. Mm. So, I have a position that is available. Mm. Yes, <laughs> and I need you to um, work for me. So, um, yes, so just nodding, yes, exactly. She's finally lost it. Yes, Captain. She's talking to the... Yes, I'm talking to the cow. I'm talking to the cow. I'm talking to the food. So, um, Mr. Cow, um, what is your work history? I mean, who have you um, worked for before? I mean, I really need um, some really good protein in my life. and um, But I'm also needing some other, you know, things. So, I just want to know, like, how have you worked for other people before? Oh, you've given them lots of protein? I want to see. You've got a, quite a uh, history of protein. That's wonderful. Let's see what else. Oh. Oh, well, because you're grass-fed, you're not as high on um, fat. Well, that's good. Okay. Summer body. Not bad. Oh, and it looks like you don't have carbs at all. Well, that's wonderful. Well, let's see what else. Uh, got a little violet. Oh, you got some vitamin D in you. Okay. Oh, my. You've got... Quite a bit of calcium, Mr. Cow. So, um, well, tell me something else. And now, do you get along with other nutrients, or do you sometimes have problems at work with other nutrients? Oh, you do get along. Well, that's wonderful, Mr. Cow. Okay. Well, um, let's see if I have any other questions for you today. Now, Mr. Cow, um, some people have told me that you are more likely to give them cancer. Well, well, Mr. Cow, I've also heard though that if they eat their greens, right? Isn't it something like that? That, um, what's the word? Um, chlorophyll, right? Doesn't chlorophyll uh, prevent the metabolism of that uh, heme, the heme, which is in the, that iron? That's what I thought, so that's a good thing too. So I guess if somebody eats a uh, salad or greens with their uh, cow, or green beans. <laughs> Sponge warm and seven. Well, go home. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think things are kind of good. All right, well, we have one other person to um, interview today, so we'll let you know. All right. <laughs> yes, it's well. I'm waiting for the cow to respond, but you didn't wait enough. You didn't oh, I need to. Oh, I didn't. I didn't give Mr. Cow longer time. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
Now I'm going to ask Mr. Peanut Butter. Now technically you would not make meatloaf with peanut butter, but you might make it with um, lentils or some legumes of some sort. So, um, so I'm going to pretend it's peanut butter because I didn't have a, a thing of anything else. But so, all right. So, um, hello, Mr. Peanut Butter. How are you doing today? <laughs> Mad cow disease. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> She's gone crazy. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing today, Mr. Legume? So, where all have you worked before? Um. <laughs> Peanut butter doesn't talk. <laughs> Does money? Yes. Does money talk? She needs a real cow. I feel like a real cow sometimes. <laughs> so, um, what kind of accomplishments do you have? You know, it's, butter and jelly. You, oh, you've got some good protein in you, don't you? Yes. Smooth and chunky. All right. So it looks like, well, let's see here. Now, you are definitely lower in <laughs> calories than um, Mr. Cal, so that's definitely a and good you thing. you can take that to the farm. Yes, and how about the, oh, you're lower in fat as well. Well, that's good stuff, good stuff. There. Oh, but it doesn't look like you got any vitamin D here. I see, I see. Oh, but you do have, oh, quite a substantial amount of folate. Oh, but no vitamin B. Mm, 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 mm. Can't win them all, sweetheart. Well, looks like you're a little bit lower in fat. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, let me ask you the most important questions. Um, in your um, previous employment, um, do you get along with other, you know, workers? Um, you know, do you have any you know, issues, working with other nutrients. We really stick together. <laughs> Is this like a Tinder or a job interview? <laughs> it's probably more like a Tinder. <laughs> okay, so you know what? It's funny that you should say that. Let me tell you why. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly dime. So when you think about it, really, the food that we eat sometimes, that's really what we go for, right? We go for the Tinder right? We don't go for the, you know, I don't know, match.com. I don't know what you go, what kind of thing you would interview for, but it's very much in the same way of how you would interview a mate, right? Because you want someone that's going to stick around and you want someone that's going to be faithful and you want somebody that's going to be nice, even though they've got to look good. Or do you want somebody on Tinder that's just going to be like a one night stand so you only care what they look like. You don't care what diseases they're going to give you or whatever. It's very similar. So that's actually a really good point. I hope I'm not getting too deep for you guys. Let's check the meatloaves. You auditioned for the part of the cow, not the peanut butter. <laughs> All right, let's check the meatloaf and see how it's doing. I don't think Mr. Cow's doing too well. Ah, it's hot! Whoa, check this out, you guys. Do I need to do the, the uh, bacon a little bit longer? A little bit longer? Begging me? At like 500. All right, I'm gonna give it. Ow! Five more minutes, okay. I feel good. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay, so I think I'm only gonna take a 60, this is my last 60 second BRB just to clear the station, but hold on before I do, because everybody's got a million questions, I'm sure. McDonald's fries, one night stand. Exactly, exactly. And then you feel so horrible the next day and exactly. You're like, don't go there, don't do it. And it's cheap and it satisfies, but only for a second. Exactly, exactly. Doesn't satiate, doesn't stay, exactly. All right, 30 second BRB, I'll be back and I'm gonna have the station all ready to go to take pictures and to show you guys final results. So, 30 seconds.
All right, guys, so here's our pie. Now I think our meatloafs are now done. So I'm gonna plate these girls up. Ooh, these are looking good. One, two, three. No, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, they got to put the rutabagas too. Oh, the other three? Do you have the Always helps to be dramatic. It always helps to be dramatic. All right, so these are our mashed rutabagas. Uh, let's see if I can squeeze them in between here. I need to make them like an egg. Don't get excited. Mm. Just gonna squeeze them in right there. You know what I need is like the um, egg shape, egg shape. Oh, what do y'all think? Looks good? Mmm. All right, that is it, y'all. We have some delicious keto grass-fed beef wrapped in bacon individual meatloafs with some air-fried green beans with a little bit of kick. We've got some what it is in that parsnips no rutabagas mashed rutabagas and blueberry pie naughty nice nice naughty so anyways all right guys thanks for joining me thank you so much miss stewart for being an awesome friend and for coming and seeing me and joining me in the stream and suffering through my lesson thank you walt thank you my dear whirly and Randy, if you're out there, anybody else who hasn't said hi in the stream, thank you again, Tad, for your amazing blueberries. Looking forward to eating the pie. Thank you, darling. I appreciate it. Hope to see you guys soon. And thank you guys again for joining me Thursday morning, 6 a.m.-ish. You know me. It'll be before 7, but probably a few after 6. I have no idea what I'm going to do this Thursday, but it's going to be something really exciting. Maybe something else with blueberries again. We'll see. All right, guys. Good night. Thank you for joining me from Arizona, from New York, from Georgia, and anybody else who has joined me from wherever. I hope you have an amazing night. Good night. Thank you so much. Naughty to nice. Good night, guys.